Hey guys, Ben Payne's here and today we are back. However, this time we are doing something a little bit different. As you can see from the footage here, we are actually outside and here we are at Herefordshire Raceway. So this is a lot different to a team sport track and I'm really looking forward to getting stuck in and showing you guys how I got on. However, before we do jump into the footage of me going around for practice, I would just like to say if you are new here could you please hit the subscribe button and like the video if you do enjoy it as I really do appreciate it and I would like to say a great big thank you to you guys as we have reached over 100 subscribers which is something I never thought would happen and I'm really amazed at and I just want to carry on pushing for you guys and making the best content I possibly can for you guys to enjoy. As you can see here it was a little bit of a damp day which is something that I really wasn't really prepared for so you can see on my camera there are a few little droplets of rain it was light showers here and there but for the most part it was just damp and this is something that I had to adapt to pretty quickly so as we come across the line there for our first fly and lap in practice I would like to say that the session or the day was planned out as follows so there was a 10 minute practice session which I booked in for before the event just because I knew that it was a new track it's my second time outdoors unfortunately I wasn't able to video my first session which happened quite surprisingly and quite quickly and if you haven't seen or heard about me doing that head over to my Instagram which is linked in the description at BP karting underscore and I did have a full race report on that but as I was saying once practice was completed we then went into three separate heats so we had a back starting heat a middle starting heat and a front starting heat which was all decided at random inside of the paddock before the races began and then this the top now i think there was 22 drivers so the top 11 went into the a final and the bottom 11 went into the b final with the person finishing in first in the b final moving up to the a final so this is something that i was really interested in and my main goal for this afternoon this day was just to try and really show myself that i had what it takes to keep up with some of the guys outside obviously this was actually in fact an open grand prix and it was the sixth round of and sixth and final round of the herefordshire raceway open grand prix so there was a lot of competitive drivers out on track all battling to win the overall championship that they were holding and i was actually placed into the lightweight group which i was a little bit shocked about i thought i would be in the heavyweight group but clearly i'm not quite heavy enough and even though i am around 90 kilograms i guess it's just not what they were looking for in the championship they were running but you can see here my first lap was a 40 second lap my second was a 37 and my third was a 36 so acclimatizing pretty quickly to the track and something i was really struggling with was the lack of grip on the track to begin with and i wasn't really used to the carts either they felt a bit different to anything that i used before i wasn't gelling with it as quickly as i wanted to and you saw there the driver on the previous lap really flying past me and also just flying off into the distance away from me you can see just on the right there as we went over the bridge and they're already past the start finish straight so this gave me a little bit of a knock in confidence but as you can see in the top left as we carry on throughout the session the times were continuing to tumble there wasn't a slower lap at any point for the first four laps and there you can see really hitting the brake i was really trying to be careful with the brakes because i felt that the cart locked up very easy and i saw quite a few people actually managing to spin out under braking especially on the hairpin corner you can see there tom in front of me who was a very fast driver on the day and as soon as i let him pass i thought right i'm going to try and keep up with him because i know he is a regular to herefordshire and i was trying to keep up with him but you can see through just the first corner what a big gap he created on me and from this sort of aspect i really did have a little bit of a knocking confidence as i said i thought i'd be able to keep up with some of the drivers even though they are regulars to the track but i still hadn't found the correct line round the track and I also wasn't really hitting a lot of the apexes as much as I was on that corner but I was really struggling on some of the corners to actually get the grip especially down the corkscrew there there was absolutely no grip coming down and you'll see throughout the rest of the video how much of trouble I was having on, on that corner but 
once again going across the line now 35.232 which I was really happy with and I think this was sort of akin to Tom being in front of me and trying to push on and try and keep up with him there you can see that hairpin really mucking it up and this allowed I believe that's Finley just driving past me there and he shot down my inside and I did race Finley at the SRK championship round that I competed in at Wigan so I realized pretty quickly this was sort of the benchmark that I wanted to give myself sort of to keep up with him and try and challenge with him as obviously he is in the same weight category as me for the BIKC as well so I really wanted to try and latch on behind him follow some of his lines and try and learn the track a lot better compared to what I was doing previously you can see the exit on that corner that corner really giving me quite a lot of trouble you can see how much he's maximizing the track there by leaning the car all the way to the right and really keeping his foot in under the tunnel which is something I didn't quite have the confidence to do at the beginning there getting that line very wrong and almost ending up in the tyres you can see just on one lap how much time I'd lost so once again I did actually lose a tiny bit more confidence so I really wanted to try and dig in deep on these practice laps and try and learn as much as I could before the heats because I didn't want this performance that you're seeing now to sort of reflect into the races because I knew that I would get dropped I knew that other people would be able to just get ahead and pull away but in terms of the weather as well you can see that the droplets on the screen have actually disappeared so luckily for myself and the other drivers the rain was actually holding off although the track did still feel very slippy very cold very damp so there was still a little bit of a struggle with grip you can see we do come across the line with a 35.090 which is obviously an improvement once again which i was very happy with and after seeing some videos of other drivers at herefordshire before i came here a little bit of research myself i realized around 35 is where i wanted to be however you could tell that i really don't have the confidence yet so i knew that there was a lot of time left in me especially if i wanted to keep up with someone like finley who has almost exited my screen now where he's made so much time up on me in regards to time i would just like to say that the lap times during practice are 100 percent accurate and these are the times that i did actually get while i was going round in practice however as we move on later into the races i didn't actually get a time sheet or understand what my exact times were so as we go around the times will be rounded to the time that it says on the timer in the top right as we come across the line so take what you will from the times later on in the video but i would just like to say obviously there is a small margin of error there but we do come across the line here with a 35.254 which was a really fast lap and what you are watching now is in fact my fastest lap of practice so we did come around here really getting in tight and smooth into the first hairpin which is something that i hadn't actually managed to do the same again on the second one getting a really smooth line rather than actually drifting into the corners which is what i've been doing so far throughout the session really keeping my foot in and only lifting off a little bit through the tunnel section up and down the corkscrew here really getting tight to the apex and running a little bit wide over the curb there but i was trying to keep the car as straight as possible and this did in fact leave us with a 34.999 second lap which i was really happy with i was able to get below the 35 second mark however when i did come off and see the time sheet i was in fact ninth fastest out of 11 on the track you can see their driver hitting the brakes a little bit too hard and going into the apex of the corner but as i said i was actually ninth out of 11 which is something i wasn't too happy with however for this being my first couple of laps around the track it being quite damp and also me being quite heavy all the excuses i could throw in i was i was reasonably happy with the performance especially as some of the drivers on track were real regulars to the track and they've been partaking in the whole competition that had been run at Herefordshire so I was really happy with this practice and I was hoping to take as much as I have learned from going around these first few laps and really hope to bring it into the heats that we're about to come into in a second so coming around here not going as wide there and it really does compromise your exit when you don't go very wide on the corner after the tunnel and the same here just going down the corkscrew getting that reasonably all right not sliding out too much you can see the checkered flag on the left to signify the end of the session we did in fact get a 35.008 to round off practice So here we go then guys, jumping straight into the first heat, starting in 10th. Unfortunately, there was no real countdown there. I don't think my camera caught 
the grid lineup for some reason, but we did start off in 10th place here, getting a little bit too much speed into the first corner and really hitting the bloke in the white helmet in the back a little bit. Again, carried a little bit too much momentum down the corkscrew and give it a little bit of a loading session, but we do come across the line now for our first official lap. So down in 10th, this was my heat where I started at the backs, which I was a little bit happy about because obviously I didn't really want to start at the front straight away so I was quite happy with how the grids had lined up and here we are behind the driver in the black and red suit really hoping to try and make sure I don't get dropped off too much you can see the pack ahead already disappearing and we go for a lunge right down the inside on the first lap and we actually get the position up into ninth place which I was really happy with and now at this point I really wanted to just press on and try and catch up to the group that had formed ahead of me I, I realized I got a little bit dropped by battling that guy in the black and red and there was a nice few number of people ahead of me you can see they had a driver in the yellow spinning out which gave me another position there into P8 now so we've already gained two positions which I was really happy with as when I was at Wigan I, every single heat I seemed to lose positions so the fact that I actually gained positions in this first heat really gave me a big big confidence boost coming into the rest of the event and it's something that I carry through for the rest of the day and we come across the line now 35.130 so almost taking off from where we left off in practice almost getting the lap times down to where we were getting to by the end of the session trying to be as smooth as possible on the break and that was absolutely key in these conditions obviously I'm used to having a little bit less sensitivity on the pedals at team sport or indoors and if you get it wrong here you really will slide and that's something that I did realize pretty quickly so I try to be as careful as possible try to be as smooth as possible with the wheel there was a lot of understeer and here at this point in the race we really were just trying to close up to the person ahead of us in the white helmet and trying to track them down try and make some sort of pathway through the rest of the field you see we did get a 34.840 lap time which was in fact my fastest lap so far for the day which I was really happy with and it proved that in a competitive situation I was able to just take the next step and really push forward and try and make moves throughout the rest of the pack you'll see the distance is closing between myself and the driver ahead but they are just a little bit too far ahead for any sort of like slipstream advantage or just following their lines you can see they're sliding around a little bit in the treacherous conditions I was trying to stay as tight as possible through each of the corners once again there were 34.470 laps so the lap times are really coming down and they're really coming down quickly as well which is something that I was quite happy with that I was able to get on the pace as quickly as possible because usually it does take me a little while to warm up and get into the groove of a race situation so the fact that I was able to really be quite explosive out of the blocks and really try and make some moves early really did make me quite happy so you can see there through the corkscrew really messing up the line on the exit there getting a little bit of a slide and that led to losing about half a second to the driver ahead so all the time that I just gained they locking up a big time there and that's something I really was trying to avoid by being as smooth as possible on the brakes coming through once again running a little bit wide onto the curve and then trying to maximize the whole track and keep my foot as flatly planted as possible through the section underneath the tunnel and going up over the corkscrew really trying to get tight to the apex once again sliding a little bit wide and almost hitting the wall much like I have almost every lap so far we come across the line now 34.670 and at this point in the race I think I was just a little bit too comfortable I tried to settle down in the car and I was trying to just be consistent but I think that I took my foot off the gas pedal a little bit and you can see I did run a little bit wide my concentration went as well and I think that I was happy with gaining two positions but I thought in my head that it would be difficult to catch up with the person ahead you see we were very equal on pace and not really gaining any time even though I'm I was about to say I'm not really losing any time you can see the gap that's formed there coming out of the corkscrew once again I come across with a 35 second lap once again which clearly isn't the pace that's required for this race you can see how much time that's given the driver ahead he was clearly a lot cleaner through the corkscrew and you can see down the left the big gaggle of cars and there I think there was six of them in total so the battle from first to sixth was all just completely bunched in one place which I guess would be an amazing fight to have been in but unfortunately I'm just in a little bit of no man's land here at the moment you can see the driver ahead gaining a little bit more time so at this point I was really quite comfortable at where I was and I was just trying to 
quite the fastest line. It's taken it a little bit as practice, I guess. Obviously, it was my first heat, and I had still gained two positions, which I was really happy with. So here, I was just trying to be as smooth as possible, try and catch up to the guy ahead. You can see getting a little bit too comfortable once again, getting into the tyre barrier, and obviously that's going to lose me a little bit of time. But coming up around the bottom section here, I really was once again going a little bit too hot into the corner, and I think I slipped with a little bit of understeer and actually put me into the side wall and you can see the, the marshal just waving the flag for the end of the race so the first he did in fact end in eighth position so let's see if I can improve in the next one so then moving into our second heat giving myself a little bit more time to think before the race starts we're starting in fifth position so this was our middle heat fifth out of 11th and we get underway quite well there behind Finley who I mentioned earlier and I really wanted to try and get past him as quickly as possible getting a little bit held up there I looked for a little move to the inside so we are actually side by side at this point but I decided to back out in order to reduce any contact that's being made and you can see they're making a move too wide down the straight so I was trying to hold the inside line here in case one the driver in the blue gets forced out so I really followed him through but I didn't get the best exit However, this was okay as we were able to pull alongside the driver in the blue. Really get down the inside there. A little bit of contact and we move up into fourth position. Once again here, Finley goes a little bit wide and compromises himself. And I'm able to just dip down the inside in the second hairpin there. And by holding the inside line under the tunnel, we're actually able to move up into third place. But the position changes don't stay there as so we get bumped to the outside there. Down into fifth after being in third and then luckily I'm able to get a decent run out of the corkscrew to hold fourth position and the inside line here going into the first corner really trying to stay as tight as possible to make sure that the driver behind me doesn't actually manage to get ahead here I stuck to the middle of the track trying to hold a little bit of a defensive line the driver in second actually spins out and this gives me second position as I go to dart down the inside but I get forced wide once again down to third and then fourth you can see the driver there signaling to the driver in third to try and pull away from me and try and work together and this is something that I was gonna know I knew I was gonna struggle with this because these are two of the drivers that have been to every single championship round so if I was able to hold and catch up with them and, and hold my pace with them then I knew I'd be in for a decent battle we can see through the first corner already the, the time difference they managed to pull away from me so so far we've only actually managed to gain one position out of all that scrapping so I really want to try and hold fourth position and hopefully tag along behind these two in front of me obviously it's a completely hectic first lap there absolute chaos which I absolutely loved if I'm being honest with you it was a lot of fun being involved in all of those different fights all at the same time we do come down the start finish straight here in fourth position still you can see the gap that is forming ever so slightly every corner and these guys just did have the edge over me in this heat which is something obviously can't really be helped as they've been here so many times and obviously this is my first time I was really trying my best I was really I'll, I'll tell you what inside that helmet I was sweating away I was really trying my best and trying my hardest to push and keep up with these guys but you can just see how much time they're gaining every corner and it's just obviously I'm not really used to even driving outside in general so I am going to give it that excuse once again come across line 34.840 and I think much like the first heat at this point I realised my fight wasn't with the two ahead of me it was probably with anyone that was coming up behind me but what I didn't realise is there wasn't really anyone coming up behind me either so once again I was just sort of stuck in no man's land here at this point so I was really just trying to focus on once again trying to learn the track as much as I could ready for another heat or really for the finals that were coming up later in the event but here I was looking over my shoulder quite a few times I, was, I think I was looking for my opponents but I wasn't sure if they were really there or around me I can't quite remember if I'm honest but yeah I would come across like now 34.540 which is a very quick time I was very happy with this I think some of the faster drivers were able to put in a 33 second lap which is what I was sort of aiming for in terms of the rest of the day obviously you can see from talk about the rain in the practice session that's completely gone away now at this point obviously it is still overcast and there was a big chance of rain coming in but the track seemed to be drying out obviously it was still cool in temperature wise and it was still quite cold you can see there in the top left my lap times are coming down lap by lap so we got down to a 34.420 
obviously as I said earlier the lap times aren't completely accurate to the nearest thousand but they were still pretty accurate times regardless 34.420 I was very happy with this as I believe that this was one of the fastest times that I was able to put in for the whole day and I was trying to carry on that momentum and try and push for the guys ahead but as I said they were consistently putting in 33 second laps so every lap they are just sort of breaking away more and more every single time and it's like even went in a little bit wrong on that corner there just got a little bit too wide and that forced me onto the side of the track which obviously lost me a little bit more time so here once again talk about how comfortable I was I think that at this point in the race I was just very comfortable staying in fourth position obviously I had gained another position so I gained two in the first heat and one in the second which I was very happy with and I was hoping to just maintain this position not lose the positions that I had gained because obviously every finishing position counts in order to be pushing up for the A or B final now after this race I didn't realize but I was actually sitting very nicely on the edge of the A final which is something that I never expected so obviously we had to put in a good performance to finish off the rest of this race and for the last heat as well because if I was able to put in a respectable finish in the third heat then I knew that I would actually be starting in the A final be it at the back but I would still be there regardless which is something that I think is a huge achievement for myself so coming across the line now once again trying to be as consistent as possible with 34.470 which is a very quick lap time once again and I do believe that this was actually the last lap of this heat now so we're coming around here trying to stay as tidy as possible going over the curb a little bit just to maximise the exit trying to get the right hand wheel over that white line just to try and make the track as wide as possible before swinging it in underneath the tunnel once again the corkscrew really trying to get as close to the wall as I dared but going a little bit too wide there almost going straight into it but we do come across the line there for the finish we're 34.820 lap which isn't the best something we can work on in the last heat coming into the third and final heat this was my front start you can see I'm in third position I was in 12th overall so one position off the A final which is something I really wanted to push for and all I had to do to achieve that was to finish one position ahead of where the person in 11th did in the alternating heat so I believe he finished in 6th or 7th so as long as I finished 5th or above I would be alright here really close up to the driver in 2nd place and coming down the straight here this is the first mistake of the day I kept my my foot on the brake as I turned in I kept my foot down a little bit too long and we go from third all the way to last place which I was absolutely fuming at at this point I literally had the A final in the bag and my confidence just really did get the better of me a little lapse of concentration there and I dipped all the way back down to the back of the grid by the end of the first lap so at this point I really was I wasn't as angry as I thought I would be from that I, I was I started to stay as calm and chilled out as possible and I really wanted to try and focus on just trying to gain back as many positions as I could and as a matter of fact that is what we did straight away you can see how much time we've gained on the drivers at the back of the pack here so really right up behind their bumper now about half a lap after we were, we were miles behind and really look for the inside here but I did go a little bit deep and compromise the line of the driver ahead so I decided to back off and give him the space obviously that wasn't really my corner to sort of steal there really getting right up behind him now at this point going down the inside being very brave into the first corner going over the curves and just forcing my way down the inside a little bit there I didn't quite get the run out of the corner so unfortunately this battle in here at the back has sort of caused me to lose a bit of time but here does do a little bit too much of the old break and this causes me to get a beautiful switchback move coming out of the second hairpin so that put us up into 10th position now I was looking ahead and seeing the gap that had formed and going a little bit wide there as well having a little bit of struggle on the tyres obviously my confidence was a little bit off but I think at this point I really was just trying to knuckle down and just go as fast as possible see there driver on the grass to the right hand side and as he's rejoining the track we are able to actually overtake him so that puts us up into ninth position now so much like in the first heat just gaining the position and gaining almost a free position there as well which 
Obviously, I have now lost six positions, but we are looking to crawl our way back up through the pack. And you can see there is still a big group ahead of me, and I really had my sights set on tagging along to the back of this group and really trying to get involved in the action that was going down ahead of me. So we do come across the line here, activating a little bit of human DRS at 34.840, so sort of around the average for my whole day. I was around 34.8, I was around like the mid 34s for the whole day. So once again, a pretty average lap for me, but here really closing up through the head to see how much time I was gaining. And another reason I wanted to overtake the person ahead of me is because they had the exact same helmet as me. And there's only room for one fluoro green helmet on the track so I really want to try and catch up, overtake if I could and try and gain back some more of the positions as I mentioned you can see the gap is closing down really leaning forward trying to gain as much time down the straight as I could a 34.440 so a pretty quick lap there once again almost aligned with my fast times in the second heat and really closing up now at this point we can almost touch the car ahead we're getting that close going quite wide into the corners and really running over the apexes which is, I was really happy with I was trying to just tuck forward as much as I could just lower as much wind resistance as I can going down the straights here getting a pretty clean line through the last two corners and really gaining a lot of time through the tunnel section so tucking in once again trying to reduce the wind resistance 34.420 so the times are coming down once again even more we get an absolutely beautiful drive out of the first corner and actually managed to send it down the inside there on the person in eighth place so that's now us up into eighth place i see the two drivers ahead of me the person in the blue suit and another driver there having a little bit of a battle and this gave me a little bit of confidence now to try and get up behind them try and join in try and get in on the action here i was looking for a little bit of a move but staying side by side with the corkscrew it goes a little bit wide there but once again, like always, I don't have the best run through the corkscrew and this causes me to drop back a little bit. Back down to a 34.730. Obviously, we have a few overtakes here. I've really got a good exit out of the first corner once again. Going down the inside here, the driver in the reddish suit. Really going side by side, some respectful racing. He cuts across there and I look for the switch back here. Going down the straight, but unfortunately, I didn't quite have the drive out of the second half. I had to stick behind him at this point still in eighth position you see six sort of driving off at this point as we're battling once again side by side i dip in behind him here and really try and get a good exit down the main straight here we're almost side by side i was looking for the inside of the first corner but decided to dip back in as i knew the driver was driving very defensively at this point and it was really difficult to try and get past so here i held back a little bit gave myself a little bit more time a bit of breathing room to recalculate where I'm going to go next so here you can see how much he's sliding the cart around really compromising his exit but obviously being a little bit lighter he is getting some better low end speed than me out of the corners really getting in a bit too tight there you can see how much pressure I'm putting him under I carry a little bit too much speed there and I just there's a bump into the back of him we come down the corkscrew once again just trying to get in behind you can see the board on the left there from the marshal saying last lap so I really wanted to try and get as close as I could always hitting the tyres on the inside there where I'm trying to catch up as much as I possibly can trying to be as smooth as possible you see how narrow he went in there and how much time it actually allowed me to gain I didn't quite gain enough once again compromising his exit there and I really looked for the in the outside line even here but unfortunately he parked right in the middle I looked for the inside here but he really does slam the door on me I tried again to go on the outside of the corkscrew that was never going to happen so I did actually slot in behind him here for eighth position I really enjoyed that little bit of a tussle and race but we did finish the third heat in eight after our spin at the beginning of the session so let's see how the final goes okay guys so here we are moving into the last race of the day we're lining up in second position in the B final almost getting a little bit of a false start there but getting underway and unfortunately we were in the B final due to that mega spin in the third heat so we did actually lose out on the a final just about but could we make it back here by coming first in this race almost going straight into the tire wall as usual coming out of the corkscrew and unfortunately for myself here i just lost a lot of time to the driver ahead on the first lap he's completely bolted out of the first few corners obviously i went quite narrow coming underneath the tunnel and that was due to the driver in third really sending it to the inside so I wanted to go quite defensive and instead this just led to 
the driver ahead really forging a big gap early on so at this point I really want to knuckle down really dig in and try and catch up to him give him a little bit of a fight for first position obviously the more racing that we have the more experience we can get we come across line there 34.540 which is a reasonably quick lap to start off with compared to some of the others that we've done on this evening so I was quite happy with this we're maintaining time and speed on the driver ahead really mastering some of the lines now at this point really getting some good exits as well but you can just see again as we look forward the driver ahead just seems to have pulled away quite a bit and I, I just didn't quite have the pace here through the first few laps you can see the driver in the green just bowling away he's almost crossed the finish line already and I'm uh, still going down straight at 34.600 so being quite consistent, I'm, I'm staying in around the mid 34 second laps, which I was quite happy with, but I don't think it was quite the pace that was required as some of the other guys in the A final were consistently getting 33 second laps, and I think the driver ahead of me was getting some low 34 second laps, so I was just off the pace by a couple of tenths a lap so far, really trying to be as smooth as possible. You see how much drier the track is now at this point. There's a lot more grip compared to what there was at the beginning of the day so coming across the line again at 34.470 so the times are tumbling down but we're still just not gaining any time on the driver ahead if anything he's actually pulling away so I was really trying to just be as smooth as possible obviously this race was a bit longer than the heat races so I knew that there was a lot of opportunity to try and catch up if he makes a mistake I was going to jump on him and obviously in racing anything can happen so I really wanted to try and get as and try and stay as close as I possibly could to the driver ahead even though he's just every lap just disappearing further and further down the road a 34.560 next and I really was being quite consistent I was quite happy with my performance here as I was in second place and I was maintaining second place as well i wasn't actually losing much time to the guys behind you to see me check back as i did think that they were in fact on my tail so i was trying to be as confident and as smooth as i possibly could just to maintain the position obviously the drivers behind me weren't quite close enough for me to drive defensively but they were close enough to keep me on my toes we come across the line there 34.360 so i believe that is in fact my fastest lap so far of the day so the times are coming down each race so the more track time I have the more confidence I had the better I seem to be driving and obviously the track was drying out a little bit too which obviously helped running a little bit wide down I think that gave an opportunity for the drivers behind me just to catch up a little bit there just feeling the pressure I think at this point you can see not as smooth counter steering quite a lot coming in and out of the corners again through the course we're really getting a poor run down the main straight we've got across the line there 34.7 and to the inside here we do get bumped wide there by the person in third place and that pushes me down into third place so I lost the position there so I tried to stick behind the driver here and try and look for a way back once again probably could have lunged down the inside there if I was feeling brave but I decided not to make any rash moves obviously there was still quite a bit of time left in the session for me to sort of keep up with him and and then look for a move later in the race you can see I went a little bit narrow here and that sort of compromised me coming out of the course so I had to let off to make sure that I didn't hit the tyre wall on the left hand side and that meant that I lost quite a bit of time so once again just being a bit unfortunate there myself just, just being gapped straight away just not really having the pace that I feel that I should have at this point in the race to try and keep up with the two drivers that are now ahead of me so you can see the driver in the black and blue just sort of just gaining speed on me for every corner so unfortunately once again just not on the pace that I need to be on I was trying to maintain time with them trying to push myself really hard but I think I was just pushing just that little touch too hard and it meant that I was making a few silly mistakes again at 34.520 obviously I felt in myself that this could probably be quicker but unfortunately this is still a decent lap but it's just not quite the time that was required here really swinging to the right to get the exit into the second half he going a little bit too narrow and that caused the back end of the car to slide out and I was really trying to manage the throttle with as much precision as I could as well as the brake because the, the rear tyres were really slipping out when I put too much throttle down so I realised pretty quickly again that by regulating the throttle instead of just slamming it down it really did help me in there we come across the line with our fastest lap of the day yet again at 34.270 
so really keeping on the pace now of some of the better drivers on the track and you can see now the gap isn't really increasing to the driver in second place you can see he runs a little bit wide down unfortunately for me urging the car forward if I was a little bit closer I probably could have capitalised on that a little bit more but unfortunately with the gap that had been made I just wasn't close enough and also before that sort of incident from the driver ahead we're both actually catching up to the driver in first we can see there was again he has flown away and actually the last lap was in fact our fastest lap of the day overall the 34 second dead I think it was 34.005 but obviously I don't quite have the the accurate time so that's what we're going to go with and that's a pretty round number as well so we're pretty happy with that I was actually congratulated on that lap time at the end as it was one of the quickest times of the day in the end I think it was about seven fastest which obviously I'm super happy with especially with all the drivers being big regulars to the track I was trying to keep this momentum going at 34.150 you can see now we're really motoring really closing up to the driver ahead of me and if the if the race was a few more laps I think we would have had a really good chance at an overtake however you can see at the moment we're just a little bit too far behind the driver and he's just pulling away a little bit down the straight through the corners and gaining a lot of time on being very smooth getting very close to the apexes there and really getting as tight as I could for the corkscrew we do come across the line there and it says last lap so it was sort of now or never I was really hoping for a mistake you see another 34.180 so really getting the average times back down to somewhere that I was really proud of and I was really happy with so once again just really trying to close up as much as I possibly could you can see compromises exit a little bit there through the second hairpin but we're just not quite close enough to go for any sort of move really closing up through the tunnel and almost in touch and distance now of second position again but unfortunately we do come back round the last corner there on the corkscrew we just don't quite have the speed you can see the driver ahead raised his hand as there wasn't actually a checkered flag show but that was in fact the end of the race overall i was super happy with my result obviously my first time at the track and the differing conditions were also a big struggle as you can see i go right into the wall there for no apparent reason however i would just like to say thank you very much if you have watched this far into the video if you have enjoyed it could you please hit the like button and subscribe for more in the future as i have loads of new events coming up soon including the bikc i thought i'd give you guys a longer video to celebrate reaching 100 subscribers which i couldn't do without you guys I'll catch you all in the next one. Take care.